And I want to make one more comment. When the church on this scripture, when the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's us, church, when we truly get in the position, when we truly get where Jesus has said that we would get in John the 14th chapter, uh, I believe it's verse 12, where he said, greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. Hallelujah. And just... He will, these will all occur again. What we're reading about here in Isaiah, Isaiah 35 will occur uh, just as they did during the time of the book of Acts. Now, I want you to back up. I've got one scripture I need to take you to. Back up to 3215. This scripture links with what I just said. Two, two chapters back. 3215. Until the Spirit, oh hallelujah, this is where we're, what we're longing for, church. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be fruitful filled, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. See, God, we're in the last days. And this scripture, he's going to pour out his spirit from on high like he's never poured it out before. And when he does that, then that's when we're going to rise up into these greater works that Jesus talked about. We're not quite there, but we're just about there. And we're seeing trickles of it here and there. But I'm telling you, it's going to be such an outpouring upon the church, upon God's people that are hungry and looking for him, that, oh, it will just be marvelous. Marvelous. It will be, well, it'll be heaven on earth before we go to heaven. Be heaven, heaven on earth, the power, the kingdom of God coming to earth, church. That's what it's all about. The kingdom of God. Pray that prayer every day. Thy kingdom come, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to usher, we want to bring Jesus back to earth, don't we, for him to set up his kingdom. Okay, now go over to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. I'm going to move, move through some scriptures real quickly here. Isaiah 40. We're going to read 1 through 5. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, whatever it was that you're dealing with, the Lord is saying that it's been pardoned. That's what he told me to tell you. Look at that. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her. Speak to his people this morning. That your warfare is accomplished. That your iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Aren't you glad that he comes and he cleanses us and forgives us? You know, when we, get, when we stray off, then we have to repent. We have to ask him to forgive us. We have to come back. It's, it is a highway of holiness. That there's going to be such a highway of holiness that people will, won't even have any trouble walking in it, the ones that want to walk after the Lord. There is that walk that, that even a fool can't miss the highway of holiness. God's leading his people to a holy walk. But see, he says here, her iniquity is pardoned and she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. But now it's all gone. Hallelujah. He's, he's forgiven. He's blotted it out and he's going on. Okay, now let me read. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert. Make straight in the desert. Make a highway. A highway for our God. Now look at verse 4. Some of you need this. Every valley shall be exalted. Every low valley is going to be brought up. Hallelujah. And every mountain, every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough place is plain. Hallelujah. You like that? We need some plain places, don't we, church? Need some plain. We need some things. We need those rough places to be straightened out. We need those high places to come down. Hallelujah. That we can walk on them. That we can go forth. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the glory of the Lord. Verse 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Say I believe it. Come on, let's make, let's make affirmation. Lord, I believe your word. I believe what I'm hearing this morning. I believe what I'm reading this morning. Are we? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Glory to God. Now then, Isaiah 41, 
verse 18 through 20. Here's again what he's going to do. You're in the desert. It's a dark, it's a, it's a deserted place. Things are bad. Look at this. Verse 18. I will open rivers in high places. And they're going to run down into your desert. Hallelujah. Waters, rivers, he says, in high places. And fountains in the midst of the valleys. Well, we need some when we get down in those valleys. When I'm down in the valley, trying to make it alone, there's a song. It'll be worth it after all. Hallelujah. You see me trying to get, trying to make it home. Well, call my name in prayer when you see me in the valley is the way the song goes. Hallelujah. You know, we can usually tell when a brother or sister is down in the valley. You know what tells it more than anything else? Our face, our countenance. And you know, when you see somebody that's, that's low, go to them. Encourage them. Put your arm around them. Say, brother, let me pray for you or encourage you. What do you need? How can I help you? Maybe you just need a listener. Hallelujah. We need to do that one for another. We're God's children. We're the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We belong to a different nation. We're kingdom of the most, ch uh, children of the most high God in the kingdom church. Hallelujah. We must protect one another. We must stand for one another. Protect our backsides. Protect our backsides. Let's learn to protect one another's backside. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, hallelujah. And I will make the wilderness a pool of water. Well, now this is Isaiah prophesying about Jesus. Aren't you glad that Jesus can make the wilderness a pool of water? He increased the fish. He increased the bread. He can sure provide some water. Well, you know, he's done all these things all through the Old Testament. Remember when they got to, they were out in the wilderness and they had no water? And the Lord told Moses to there, go hit the, strike the rock over there. The second time he was supposed to talk to it, he got in trouble because he hit it again. And water came gushing out. That's like some of us. We get a little presumptuous sometimes. And instead of obeying God like he said do it, we just kind of do it our way flippantly. And you know what? We get in trouble every time. Every time. Thank God for the mercy of Jesus. If, if Jesus hadn't come and had mercy on us, most of us would already be greasy spots. See, Moses lost going into the promised land because of that disobedient act. See, disobedience is terrible. Sin is terrible. We don't want to partake of sin. We don't want to dabble in sin. The Bible says, he says, come out from among them. Be ye separate. Touch not the unclean. Hallelujah. He said that this morning. Well, I'm having trouble here reading this. Let me go on here. Uh, verse 19. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar. Now, see, it takes a lot of water for this luscious cedar to grow. But look what he says. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the sedum tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together. Look, this is what he says he will do in the wilderness, in the desert. Hallelujah. Okay, now then, let's go to Isaiah 51, 3. Wait a minute. Did I read all that? Which one did I read? 18? 19. 19. 19. Okay, we need to read 20. Why? Why for the glory of God? Okay. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this. Church, whatever that God uses us in, in any, any way, it's because God's hand hath done it. Amen. We cannot do it. If we could have, we would have done it a long time ago. But see, it's all for his glory. See, that's why he sized down Gideon's army from 21,000 to 300. Doesn't make any difference how many people God has when he's got a job to do. He, in fact, he, you know, he'll do it so that he can get the glory. 
So whatever comes out of us will be his doing, and he can sure take all the glory. Because we're not smart enough. Hallelujah. We're just not. But God is. Hallelujah. He's smart enough, and he knows what to do with it.